All right, so get ready, because today we are diving deep into the world of statistical arbitrage. Oh, yeah. Where algorithms are trying to outsmart the market. Hmm. And we're going to break down this research paper. Okay. It's called Advanced Statistical Arbitrage with Reinforcement Learning All right. by Boming Ning and Kisiup Lee from Purdue University. Okay. It was published um, March 20th, 2024. Mm. And it's really shaking things up. Yeah. Basically, they're using something called reinforcement learning right. to train a financial AI to find these tiny little predictable market quirks. Interesting. That could mean big profits. Yeah, what's really fascinating here is that they're throwing out some of those old assumptions about how markets work. Right. And they're letting the yeah. algorithm learn from the data itself. It's like teaching a computer to read the market's mind, right? Yeah. So before we get ahead of ourselves, okay. can you give us a quick rundown of what statistical arbitrage is all about? Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Sure. So imagine you have two stocks that always move together. Okay. Like dance partners. Mm -hmm. Statistical arbitrage is all about spotting when one of those partners stumbles a bit. Okay. Knowing they'll get back in sync soon. Gotcha. You're betting on that relationship to temporarily shift and then correct itself. I like that analogy. Yeah. So how does this actually work in the stock market? So traditional approaches usually involve finding stocks that have a history of moving together. Right. Then you look for any unusual deviations from their normal pattern. Okay. And that's where the opportunity lies. Hmm. The paper mentions a couple of these traditional methods, the distance method and the ornstein uhlenbeck process. Yes. Can you unpack those for us? Sure. So the distance method, or DM, is pretty straightforward. Okay. You're buying or selling based on how far a stock pair's price has strayed from its historical average. Right. Assuming it will eventually return to that average. Kind of like a rubber band snapping back. Exactly. Gotcha. Now, the ornstein uhlenbeck process, or OU, okay. tries to predict this snapping back with a bit more sophistication. It's a mathematical model that factors in things like how quickly and strongly the prices revert. So it's all about making a more accurate prediction of when those dance partners will get back in step. Precisely. Mm. But the problem is real markets don't always play by the rules of these neat mathematical models. Right. Because markets can be unpredictable. Exactly. And that's a key point the paper emphasizes. Mm -hmm. And that's where this paper is big innovation comes in. Okay. What they call empirical mean reversion time. Okay. They realized that relying on a preset model like the OU process was too rigid. Right. And didn't always reflect the messy reality of the markets. Yeah. That's why they decided to flip the script and let the data speak for itself. So they're measuring how long it actually takes for a stock pair to get back in sync instead of relying on a theoretical model. That's right. That's pretty clever. They even created a custom formula for this measurement. Wow. Which they named empirical mean reversion time. And get this, by focusing on stock pairs with the shortest reversion time, they believe traders can make quicker profits. It's like finding the pairs that have the fastest snapback time. Exactly. So how did they use this new measurement to pinpoint the best stock pairs? So they used a technique called grid search to sift through mountains of data and test different combinations. Okay. Essentially, they were looking for the portfolio that minimized this empirical mean reversion time. Right. The one with the quickest snapback. It sounds like they're letting the computer do the heavy lifting here, which makes sense. Yeah. But then they take this empirical mean reversion time. Right. And combine it with something called reinforcement learning. Yes. Now we're getting to the AI part, right? That's right. Think of it like training a dog. Wait, are we teaching a dog to fetch stocks now? Not quite. Yeah. But the principle is similar. All right. You reward good behavior and discourage bad behavior. Okay. In reinforcement learning, an algorithm learns through trial and error, mm. getting rewarded for good decisions and penalized for bad ones. So they're building a trading AI that learns from its mistakes. Right. What kind of rewards are we talking about here? Well, in the world of trading, the ultimate reward is profit. 
Makes sense. They build a reinforcement learning system that looks at recent price trends. Okay. And then decides whether to buy, sell, or hold the stock. Gotcha. The decision is based on this empirical mean reversion time we talked about. Okay, so they've trained this AI to spot patterns and predict the market. Yeah. But how do we know if it actually works? Right. Did they test it out in the real world? They did. First, they ran simulations. Okay. And the results were impressive. Right. Their RL system achieved profits of over 600%. Hold on, 600% profit in simulations. Yeah. That almost sounds too good to be true. It does. Let's see how that translated to the real world. Yeah, that's where their S&P 500 experiment comes in. Okay. They decided to put their theory to the test using real market data. Okay, so walk us through this experiment. What exactly did they do? They focused on 10 pairs of stocks from the S&P 500. Okay. Representing different sectors. Gotcha. You had pairings like Microsoft and Google from tech mm -hmm. and CVS and Johnson & Johnson from healthcare. Okay. They use data from 2022 as the training period for their AI. And then set it loose on 2023 data. Exactly. And the results. Their method actually beat both the distance method and the OU method. Wow. Not only in terms of overall profit, okay. but also in something called the Sharp Ratio. All right, hold on. What's the Sharp Ratio? Think of it as a way to measure how much return you get for the risk you're taking. Okay. It's basically a risk-adjusted performance score. So you're saying that by training the AI on 2022 data and letting it loose on 2023. Yes. The researchers found that their method actually outperformed the traditional approaches in real world market conditions. That's right. And it raises some pretty big questions about the future of finance and the role of AI. That's where it gets really interesting. But before we go there, okay. I think we need to dig a little deeper into how this reinforcement learning actually works. Sure. So we've got this AI that's learning to play the market by spotting these snapback moments. Right. But I have to admit, yeah. the idea of an algorithm making trading decisions is a little bit unsettling. Yeah, I understand. It feels like we're stepping into the world of science fiction. It can feel that way. Yeah. But remember, this AI isn't some rogue system operating in a vacuum. Okay. It's a tool right. designed to help traders make more informed decisions. So it's more like a high-powered assistant Exactly. Rather than a replacement for human traders. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. Okay. Imagine having an assistant right. who can tirelessly analyze massive amounts of data, uh -huh. identify subtle patterns, and flag potential opportunities. Okay. That's what this AI can do. Okay, so it takes care of the heavy lifting. Yeah. But the human trader is still in control. Exactly. The human trader brings their experience and understanding of the bigger picture to the table. Yeah while the AI provides them with data-driven insights to help them make those decisions. That makes a lot of sense. It's like having a research assistant yeah. who can process all the information and highlight the most promising leads. Right. But the human detective is still the one solving the case. Exactly. And this collaboration between human and machine has the potential to be incredibly powerful. It does sound promising, but let's be realistic. Okay. There are potential risks too. Right. Yeah. I mean, what happens if the AI encounters a situation it's never seen before? Right. Could it make a disastrous decision? That's a valid concern, and it highlights the importance of having human oversight. Right. Experienced traders need to monitor the AI's activity okay. and be ready to intervene if necessary. Gotcha. Remember, this technology is still in its early stages. Yeah. And it's crucial to proceed with caution. So it's all about finding the right balance between AI and human expertise. Absolutely. And that actually brings us to an interesting point that the researchers raised in their paper. Okay. They mentioned that their AI's reward function included something called the true long-term mean of the stock. Okay. But in the real world, yeah. we can't actually know that with absolute certainty. That's true. We can look at historical data, but we can't predict the future. Right. So how do they account for that uncertainty? That's a key limitation of any AI system. Right. They rely on the data they're trained on, mm -hmm. and that data is always going to be incomplete. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to solve a puzzle with some of the pieces missing. Okay. You can make educated guesses, right. but you'll never have the full picture. So even though this AI showed some impressive results, yeah. it's not a foolproof system. Right. It's still making decisions based on probabilities, not certainties. Right, and that's why human judgment remains so important. Gotcha. Traders need to be able to interpret the AI's recommendations, okay. weigh the risks, and ultimately make the final call. So it's not about replacing human traders, right. but about giving them a powerful new tool to enhance their decision-making. 
That's the key takeaway here. Mm -hmm. And as this technology continues to evolve, yeah, we can expect even more sophisticated AI systems mm. that can help us understand and navigate the complexities of the market. This paper really has me thinking about the future of finance. Yeah. If this technology is already showing such promising results, mm -hmm. where do you see this going in the next five, ten years? It's hard to say for sure. Sure. But I think we'll see a gradual integration of AI into every aspect of finance. Okay. From trading and investment to risk management and fraud detection. Right. AI will be working behind the scenes, helping us make smarter, more efficient decisions. So it's more of an evolution than a revolution. I think that's an accurate way to put it. Yeah. And it's important to remember that AI is not a magic bullet. Right. It's a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or for ill. That's a crucial point. It all comes down to how we as humans wow. choose to use this technology. Yeah. What ethical considerations do we need to keep in mind as we move forward? That's a question we need to be asking ourselves constantly as we venture further into the world of AI-driven finance. Right. One of the biggest challenges is transparency. Okay. How do we ensure that these AI systems are making decisions in a way that is understandable and accountable. Right, because if we don't understand how the AI is making its decisions, yeah. it's hard to trust those decisions, Right, especially when there's real money at stake. Exactly. We also need to think about fairness. Okay. Are these AI systems being designed and deployed in a way that benefits everyone, mm -hmm. or are they perpetuating existing inequalities? That's an important point. We need to make sure that this technology is being used to create a more equitable and inclusive financial system. Yes. Not to exacerbate existing disparities. Absolutely. And finally, we need to be mindful of the potential for unintended consequences. Okay. The market is a complex system. Yeah. And even the most sophisticated AI can't predict every outcome. Right. We need to be prepared for the unexpected. Yeah. And have safeguards in place to mitigate potential risks. It sounds like navigating the world of AI and finance will require a careful balance of innovation and responsibility. That's precisely it. We need to embrace the potential of this technology while being mindful of the ethical implications and potential pitfalls. Yeah. It's a challenging but exciting journey and one that will undoubtedly shape the future of finance as we know it. This has been a fascinating discussion, and I'm sure our listeners are already thinking about the implications of this research. But before we wrap up, okay. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, the S&P 500 experiment. Right. The paper mentioned that the reinforcement learning method was particularly successful in some sectors, yeah. but not so much in others. You're right. They found that their method worked best in sectors like technology, healthcare, and consumer goods. Okay. These sectors tend to have more stable price trends and predictable mean reversion behavior, yeah. which makes them well-suited for this type of approach. So it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Right. It sounds like the AI's success depends on the specific characteristics of the sector it's applied to. Exactly. And that's a, another key takeaway from this paper. When it comes to AI in finance, context matters. Yeah. You can't just blindly apply the same algorithm to every situation and expect it to work equally well. So it's not just about building a smarter AI. Right. It's about understanding how to use that AI effectively in different contexts. That's the key. And that's where human expertise and judgment will always play a vital role. Well, this deep dive has definitely given us a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. We've covered a lot of ground today from the basics of statistical arbitrage and the paper's innovative approach to the potential benefits and risks of AI in finance. We have, and it's clear that this research is just the tip of the iceberg. It really opens up a whole new world of possibilities, doesn't it? It absolutely does, and that's what makes this field so exciting. There's so much potential for innovation and discovery. Yeah. This entire conversation reminds me of something you said earlier about AI being used in other fields like weather forecasting or even video games. That's right. The core principles of reinforcement learning are surprisingly versatile. Yeah. The same techniques used to predict the weather could be applied to financial markets or even to train AI to play games at a superhuman level. It's fascinating to see how these seemingly disparate fields are connected by these underlying mathematical and computational principles. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll have AI systems that can predict the outcome of sporting events or elections. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Those are complex systems with a lot of human factors <laughs> that can be tricky to model accurately. But it's certainly fun to consider the possibilities. It is, but I think the biggest takeaway for our listeners today is this AI is already transforming the world of finance in profound ways, and this is just the beginning.
I completely agree. And, and whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting out, it's crucial to stay informed about these advancements and understand how they're shaping the future of money. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end of our deep dive into statistical arbitrage and the exciting world of reinforcement learning. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Deep Dive. And as always, keep those brains buzzing and never stop exploring. <laughs>